So in this video, I'm going to install Zabbix Agent on a Windows host. And this Windows host is special because it's behind a firewall. It's on my private network, which is actually my home network. And I'm going to have to set up a firewall rule, which I've already set up quite a few rules already. They all point to different hosts inside the network, which will all be running Zabbix Agent. And they'll all be running, listening on their own internal ports, being 10050, like so. So these are the, the port forwarding rules on my firewall, which you will have to set up if you use this method. So anyway, over here in the cloud on DigitalOcean, I've got this Zabbix server, which I've set up in my other videos. I could have used AWS, GCP, or Azure, or many others, but I went with DigitalOcean. There's a link in the description. So uh, let's get started. That's what's going to happen. I've already set up this one here on host one. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the configuration and the hosts. Okay, so over here, my host one, that's the host name of it, actually. It's not really host one. Doesn't matter. And it's already set up, and we can see that the Zabbix availability is green. That's all working perfectly. That's a Windows host template OS Windows. Over here, that's a Linux host. I'm not going to talk about that in this video. And then I have also have Zabbix agent running on the Zabbix server itself. And that's enabled and running. And that's fine. Okay, let's just uh, go on to the host that is going to run Zabbix Agent, and that actually happens to be the same computer I'm recording on. Okay, so we're at this URL here, Zabbix Download Agents, and I'm going to choose this one, Zabbix Agents, Pre-Compiled Agents. I'm going to use Windows 64-bit. There it is. Okay, let's just download. Okay, save. Let's install. Accept. Okay, the host name is this. This found the host name already, so this is quite cool. The Zabbix server happens to be Zabbix dot dot com. The agent listen port 10050 and the server or proxy for active checks. I'm just going to use Zabbix .com. I'm not going to enable remote commands PSK just yet or add it to the path. I'll just do it like this first. So we say yes to all those because I'll use those in other videos, sender and get. And put in the default location. Next install. Okay, that's finished. Excellent. Okay, so what it's done is put the files into C program files, Zabbix Agent. Here we go, Zabbix Agent exe, and there's a configuration file just there. So let's open with VS Code. Let's have a look at some of the properties. Okay, okay, that's the log file, which is very useful. Enable remote command zero. That's the server, zabbix.shawmazi.com. That's what I've already filled in. The listen port for my local agent, zabbix.shawmazi.com. That's the host name of this computer. If you don't know what the host name is, I mean, it's already pre filled it for me, you can just type. Uh, Open up command and type host name into your computer and it tells you just there. Okay. Agent conf. This is all good so far. I'll keep this simple so I won't do any encryption just yet. Okay, so let's have a look at services. Task manager services. Zabbix agent is running. Well, very good. Let's go back to Zabbix and now let's create a host. Here, create a host. I'm going to call this host um, and the agent interface. 
Let's go back to here. Remembering the Zabbix server, that's this thing, is in the cloud on DigitalOcean. So it's on the internet. Now the server I'm connecting to, this one here, which I'm calling host two in this image, this is behind a firewall. So, so on my firewall, I've set up a port forwarding rule. So all messages to 10052 will get redirected to host two. 10050 where the agent is running so because the that computer that i want to connect to is on my own internal private network i need to find out its public ip so best way to do that is just to open up a browser and go what is my ip and just copy and paste it now if you like me and like many people in the world these ip addresses change so there's another way to solve that problem, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Anyway, so that's the IP address, that's the DNS, and this is the port that I'll be connecting to. And my router will redirect all messages to 10052 from this IP to Zabbix agent running on my host 2, which happens to be named desktop. Excellent. And actually, I better set the group, so I'm just going to call it... Uh, I'm going to call it just templates for now. Okay, so just before we press add on this, I'm going to open up another server. I'm just going to SSH onto my Zabbix server. And I'm going to just double check that that uh, port forwarding rule is working. So I'm going to use Telnet. I'm going to use this external IP here. Okay, because this SSH server here is in the on the internet, and I'm gonna connect to port one zero zero five two, like so. And here we go. That's telling me that it's actually connected. It's just closed. Zabbix just closed it because it didn't recognize any packet I sent it. Doesn't matter. I can tell you that the port forwarding rule is working and it's going to my new Zabbix agent that I just installed on the Windows host. Okay, let's go. Let's go press add. Add. Radio. Desktop. That's my host too. Hasn't found any information yet. The Zabbix is still showing as... It's probably behind my head. Okay, so... So we can see here that the Zabbix availability is not showing green. We can wait a little moment for that. But the what I will do is now just check the Zabbix logs. So if I go here and open up Zabbix Agent D log, open with Visual Studio Code, for instance, it's telling me some things here. No active checks on server. Not found. Failed to accept an incoming connection from, oh, that was me actually, when I was doing my telnet. Reading first byte from connection failed, that's okay. Okay, so some of these errors, what we're seeing here is because I hadn't actually set up the host on Zabbix yet, before the agent had started. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, hear all that save it and then re restart the Zabbix agent and see what messages we get. So restart. Okay, so saying stopped starting. Looks all good so far. Let's uh let's have a look at Zabbix and see whether it shows as available yet. Still not If we go to monitoring later starter and then we type in templates and find this computer I just added. This is my host to supply. Nope, still no incoming data. Let's check the logs again. Still nothing on the logs. Okay, so what I haven't done is I need to add some templates to the host, which I didn't do. So templates over here, select. I'm going to add one called Zabbix uh, Template OS Windows. 
select press add so it shows up there now press update now that will now request template specific information from that Zabbix agent so hopefully we should start getting something now let's have a look at the logs still nothing showing there I go over to monitoring latest data apply okay so we now have data coming in from the agent if I go to configuration hosts that's actually showing as green now just in case uh, my head was in the way there's the Zabbix availability now well there you go that's how to install Zabbix agent on a Windows host and just remember that many of the examples that you see on how to do that might not be behind the firewall so, so the problem I've solved in this video is how to do that when you're a host is behind a firewall and the trick was to create several port forwarding rules on your on your router to redirect the external IP to the internal Zabbix agent now because I'm just on my home network my home my private home network this external IP address is going to change so it's going to be it's going to lose my Zabbix agent every day or so and I'll have to update this IP the way to solve that is to use a Zabbix proxy I'll show you how to install a Zabbix proxy in the next video so thanks for watching remember to like comment subscribe and share